How are you all doing? Ralph here, Ralph of Customs, trying to frame the shot with this banners in the background, don't know. Welcome to another mix and match, mash up, call it what you will. Um, here's a few highlights of what I've been up to. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, tap the notification bell, and check out that description. Go follow my friends. Lots of love, everyone. See you soon. What we have is uh, I'm stripping this FLH down and I need to pop the clutch off but I don't want to undo the adjuster nuts and have it all come apart. What I do on mine is I've got a washer that fits over this and it's got that hole in the centre to take the adjuster screw and then I put the, the nut back on and the nut catches it and compresses the springs. Et voila, you can lift it all off as one. Unfortunately, I can't find it. It's been a while since I've had my clutch off mine, and I've come to do this and I've lost it. So let's pop over to the uh, Harrison lathe and get one spun up. So, I've got this piece of stainless. I thought I'd make a forever tool and if I need to take Steve's clutch off, or my clutch off, or anyone else with a shovel, their clutch off in the future, we'll have a tool for doing it, won't we? So, I've got this bit of stainless, and it's about right on the OD. I've not really got to touch that, but I've got to, I've got to step this down to uh, 1.45 inches. So, 1 inch, 450,000. And that'll pass through the pressure plate. Um, and then we've got a sticking on through it that's got to be 3 8 clearance so I'll make it M10 or 10 mil sorry and uh, then we need to part it off leaving ourselves a bit of a flange I'm going to go a quarter of an inch for through the pressure plate and then 150 thou to make the bit that's uh, on the outside I reckon that'll be bob on so we'll go then I've no idea what grade of, grade of stainless steel this is, but it machines quite freely. I, I guess I'd say it's 303, so what I've done, I've put a centre drill in and now I've, I'm going straight in with the 10mm. I don't see the need to put a pilot in because this just cuts lovely look, which is slowed it down a little bit, dab of oil, and away she goes. So we're back onto machining proper. Bit up tonning now, as my mate Mr. Douglas says. I'm just going to touch off just a little, and I'm going to take a slight cut just to true this up. So, I think that's interrupted. I don't think we're quite there with that, but it'll do. There we go. Just a little more. We'll set a scale to zero. On the cross slide. And get that a measure. We know we want, see how it is, 1.45. And we're on 1.75. So we set a difference off. Okay, so we touched off on the face as well. We've skimmed down the outside, measured. Seeing the depth of cut that we need to bring it to size. Now we've touched on this face, and I'm going to use my dial indicator on my stop that's just out of shot down there. You can't see it, but I've shown it in other videos, and I'm going to wind it on the required depth, which is quarter of an inch, six mil. 
So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we can make a mark, a little witness mark. And we can start turning in earnest. Bastard, they come off hot. And a final lighter cut to finish, and then we'll check for size. There we go. This is good. And we are looking for 1.45 inches. So we've got don't even make any oh it's on the wrong shirt of up. 1.453. That'll do me. Three thou over. Don't think we need to worry about that. So I'll go ahead and just deeper that centre out, like that. Break this edge with my file. I actually want to put a bit of a chamfer on. So forget that file work, we we'll just have this out of the way. We'll use my chamfering tool. And we'll chamfer this one. Like that. And we'll chamfer this one. Like that. And then we're ready to pot it up. So I'll uh, put a razor blade against the work, against the shoulder. And then I can feel when my potting tool clears it. Yeah, by moving it backwards and forwards. And we're just catching it there. So a little bit more on my free, and then I can use my uh, carriage stop, the dial indicator, to wind the tool down as deep as I want it to go. So we're going about an eighth of an inch, so three millimeters, which is there. Now, I know that this parting tool won't go deep enough to uh, clear the part, if you, so to speak. So. I'll go as deep as I can and then we'll have to saw it off either in the <coughs> excuse me either in the power saw or by hand. So we spun that round and uh, spun that round, see what I did there and I'm just going to clean up the face. Bit of a speed skater I call that, as you wobble it in. And now we're away. Just check that. Uh, yeah, that'll do, wouldn't it? Just deeper the out. Get in gear, you bastard. Slow it down in with the deep bearing tool. And I just want to break that edge. But I don't want to go in with a file because it's fucking close to the truck. So what I do is go back with this humongous looking chamfer tool and try and use it delicately. A bit like using a... Uh, chainsaw. I ain't gonna get that. Hold on then. I have to switch round. Because the tool's chipped on the side that I want it, I can't reach the job. So, what have we got? Let's see if we can get him in this. Yeah. Easy. Just a touch. Just that. Look, there you go. Sorted. Right, here's the part, look. And that goes over this adjuster screw and then catches the basket 
the pressure plates are and we can put the adjuster nut on and then we can spin it up a bit excuse me while I do it with one hand don't oh, forget the right socket hold on a sec so we can knock this in a little bit look and that will compress the springs and then we can take these adjuster nuts off and remove the clutch without upsetting how it's set up. So here we have a slabby oak that's not weathered very well. It's, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I'm going to clean it up. Um, first of all, I'm going to DA it off with the 100 grit pad and then we'll get a fine off and then we'll do a media blast and then it's ready for polish really for powder coat I think we're going <laughs> we've gone from 80 grit through to 120 um, and that's got most of the marks out some of this is just that deep it's not going to come out unless I put it in the mill and give it a cut across with a fly cutter and I don't want to do that, I don't want to take too much off it but that's left it probably good enough for powder coating, you know I've worked these edges a little bit as well, there's still a mark there that's not come out but I don't want to go too mad um, let's get it in the blast cabinet and see how that goes there we go, that's blasted, now these top surfaces were fucking shocking this is the one I didn't sand and you can see it's still rough as fuck and this is the one I did sand and it's not as rough as fuck but it's uh, far from pretty but I think that'll powder coat lovely now so it's ready for powder coat here we go on a, another jolly jaunt These, this is where we live and I feel truly blessed I don't show much um, footage of the area we live in but I do appreciate it we, each and every day this is not our house by the way it's just these are the lanes around where we live so here's me and Monkey driving down the private track to spend a little bit of time with Mother Nature in it So we've got this uh, rigid weld on conversion that I did on the sports star needs welding up. There's a thread gone in one of these inserts so I need to have a look at that. And a, a few accoutrement struts, uh, wheel spacers need stamping. I'm going to stamp the big one with right and the little one with left or R and L. So uh, they don't get mixed up. Same with the old tank brackets, not stamping, welding and the chain guard. That's uh, this morning's job. in this engine mounting bolt and I'm going to try, I've got a um, 3 UNF machine tap so I've just got it in the stereo and I've got a bit of the old oil tap on it can't go wrong with a bit of oil tap and um, 
so far that is just cleaning off a peach so you can see if my hand's not in the way it's hard to film and tap at the same time but trust me that is going in super so I'll have that all the way in and then wind it all the way out and that's finished jobs are good and so that's a nice fix very nice indeed I've just videoed these for a short that's on my channel but I've had these come in I'll redo it in the right format because you want it in landscape but two vintage nut splitters and these are used for cracking nuts when you can't get them off a bolt or a stud or whatever so they undo quite a lot there's a chisel point hardened chisel point in there and then when you put the nut put them over the nut you tighten them down and then that'll crack the nut it will split it nut splitters and then you can get it off often you could wind it in until it really got a bite and split it and then use this to undo it yeah so you could turn this around then and undo it put a bar on there or whatever um we've got two flats either side and a spanner fitting on the end there i'm not sure what the little screw's for maybe that's holds this from dropping all the way out the retaining screw that one's all the way out look and the new old stock never been used wonderful bits of kit Nut splitters, wonderful. I've got these uh, massive yokes that we're replacing with sensible ones. I've shot blasted this one. It's aluminium, but it's going to be powder coated. So, um, and what I need to do is transfer these bolts, which are steering stock bolts, and maybe these bolts, which are the headlight mounts. I'm not sure if John's changing the headlight mounts because this yoke's got some shit on the front already, look. So I don't know, I don't know what he's doing there. But I know I need to do these. Now, I've been thinking how I'm best gonna do it. And my plan is to find the center of this, this yoke, and do a center line, then measure the distance between these, or the centers, yeah? And come off that center line, and then I'm gonna use dividers, from the edge of that hole to the centre of that hole and I'm going to transfer that across and then drill and tap M8 so off we go so that's what we've done with the top which is really fucking difficult because there's nothing straight, nothing square it's all round it's got this shot blast finish that the camera's picking up those scribe lines far better than they appear in real life but We've transferred, we've measured off here, we've described the arc, measured off here, described the arc, we've found the centre, we've gone either side of the centre, and we've checked from this edge down, both sides. So now drill and tap, M8. Use a bit of rapid tap. Although I could use aluminium special stuff, but you don't need it. Machine tap in the stairway, and Nicely does it, nice and gently, all the way in, and now we bob on. So, here's the second one. I used, I've got some rather large countersink drills, centre drills that put a sixty mil countersink, and uh, if I go. As big as they'll let me, then for an 8mm or an M8, I should say, thread, it gives you a lovely little taper to start it on. It gives you that proper leading edge. It makes it so much easier, especially with these machine tabs. I know this is only aluminium, but it's quite a strong grade, it's not soft as butter. Um, so it's nice to have that little taper to start with, just to uh, help get it done. Get that blow off, turn that out, and then it's ready to take the steering stop bolts 
and be fitted back into the trike. It's not a full build, we're just doing a dry run so nothing needs to be over tight. We'll get the front end back together. All together actually, it's the first time it's been in the trike, see what's what eh? So we've got the yokes in, the front wheel in. This is really well. We've just got to uh, recess, we've got to sort out the mountain bolts basically for the handlebars. Maybe make a new set. You can see the steering stops that we've put in, they work wonderfully, They're in the perfect place. And all in all, it sits really well, so we'll do a little bit more of that in the next video. And uh, that about wraps it up. So all it leaves me to say is thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and check out my friends in the description below. Have a great one. Lots of love.